December 28th, 2018. Yes, it's true. The entire 14 minute video that I just recorded failed. So I'm going to refer you to the audio to listen to that since I can't recreate the energy that I had for that. However, I was just about to show my sketchbook spread that I made in response to watching the movie Dumplin'. And it says, it's not about smashing the patriarchy. It's about finding out who you are and own in it. And that's the short version that I made last night. The longer version, which I'm posting as a quote just to contemplate, um, is as follows. It's not about smashing the patriarchy or even winning at their game. It's about finding the spaces, support, encouragement, and feeling of connection where you find the courage to take the risks necessary to find out who you are. So let's just go through each piece of that since this gives me the chance to talk about the movie. Um, so one of the characters in the movie, the kind of the goth girl with the black fingernails, says, you know, this is about the internalized uh, mindset of the patriarchy that women have taken on and we have to smash it. And that's sort of the lingo that's going around in social justice world. And, um, and the movie I love does not take that approach. These women go in to a game that is completely written by women. So this pageant has been around since 1933 tons of traditions, rules, and dogma um, that has to be carried on. The Jennifer Aniston character sort of embodies the um, carrying of that and the intense fear of not measuring up according to that game. And I love that it's all women. It's not like men are there, but obviously that has been written in like what women are supposed to look like to men but men are not in this movie in the forefront which I love so none of these girls win right the, the winner of the pageant is still the expected winner but they all win in their own way they win at their own game by participating with this certain mindset of finding out who they really are in relation to this whole game going on around them. So it's like radical participation. And the spaces that they find, this hideaway, the gay bar with the drag queens doing the Dolly Parton show, um, they find these in these gay men um, support, encouragement, and connection where they can find their courage and take the risks. And... Um, I have personally been in love with many gay men in my life. About four out of the seven, my seven best friends in college turned out to be gay. I love them. Some of them I dated, yes. Um, but if it, the friendship of gay men in my life has been so important. And I think that it's that journey that someone has to go through to really uh, identify that they are a gay man. They have to step through so many obstacles that I have no idea what that's about. What I have an idea of is having to find spaces. And I used to use the word safe space, which is a very common term also being thrown around in the social justice world. But I'm now going to use the word a feeling of connection instead of safe because of this quote that I read today from Gabor Mate, who is a great um, clinician and thinker on the subject of trauma and addiction and mind-body connection. And he said, safety is not the absence of threat, but the presence of connection. How important of a difference is that? Because what we're trying to do in the policing of spaces to make them safe is to try to control people's words and feelings and actions. Again, just like the patriarchy that we're trying to smash. So and it creates distance from our real experiences. And what we're really seeking is connection. Connection to ourselves, our feelings, our bodies, and our own experiences. And this movie does such a great job of just 
allowing each character to have their own experience of grief and loss, of winning and losing, of love, of participation, of revolution, and and just to see the vibrancy of that uniqueness was so amazing. And it, yes, each person had to take the risk, their own risk, and find their own courage. And the way that those gay men really encouraged in a space of connection these young girls to blossom and practice and find what was great about their own talents was so beautiful. And um, I love that um, the Dumplin' character, you know, showed up at the competition, ended up getting disqualified for her performance, but she won in every single way that was important to her, which was reclaiming her love of herself exactly as she is, reclaiming her love of her mother, reclaiming her best friend, her love of her best friend, and reclaiming the love of this cute boy that works with her at the restaurant, who I just had to say, I love that character in a story where normally we're so conditioned to seeing this male lead who, um, does a conquest and gets the hot girl as the prize. And here is this female lead who is, quote, fat and wins this cute boy at the end who has been waiting for her and totally gets her and sees her before she's even seen her and just has has done nothing but encourage her on her path of claiming her own power. And she is able to victoriously claimed that at the end. Loved that so much. Let me just talk about fatness. I did talk about this um, in the first version of the video, which has not been recorded. Fatness is something I feel like every girl in our society, and I know in others, let's say Western-influenced contemporary modern societies, where we've, we've been influenced by marketing images and magazine covers and commercials, every girl has a fear of being labeled as fat. Um, every woman has a fear of being labeled as fat up until a certain point, until she releases it. And um, I myself started thinking of myself as fat in about fifth grade. Um, I know my brothers told me that I was fat. He, he was trying to guide me into social acceptance by telling me that I need to really watch my weight. Then in ninth grade, girls PE class. In Illinois, PE is required five days a week for every public school student from K through 12. That's not the case in California where I live now. But I grew up in Illinois where this was the case. So I got to enjoy, suffer through daily, um, <laughs> daily um, PE class. And, oh, sorry. I got to suffer through daily PE class from K through 12. And in ninth grade, we had the unique privilege of having to strip down to our underwear, march into the PE teacher's office, and have a skin caliper body fat measurement test done on each of us. And we would then get a number where we could go to a chart and look in a column and see whether we were normal, obese, majorly obese, morbidly obese, about to die. I don't know what these columns were, but all I remember was I was in the obese column. And thankfully, I had a best friend, Sarah, who was in my class, and we got to laugh about this because we knew at that time <laughs> we were still not tainted enough by society to know that we're not obese. We know we're not obese. We know we're not unhealthily obese. Um, we're not the skinniest girls in the class, but we are, you know, happy in our bodies. And we feel good. And she was a dancer. I was a musician. We had our thing. And um, now I look back with horror on that and say, wow, why was it okay to march everyone through this process and implant these messages for life with no thought 
of what the impact could be on each of the people. Some people, it might have been some an episode they don't even remember. Um, but for me, I do remember it. And I'll say that um, the mixed messaging of my own personal story is that in the Chinese culture, it's a compliment to tell somebody that they've gained weight and they look fat because it says, wow, you have enough money to eat. So think about that cultural context. And then the American context, which says the skinnier you are, skinnier you are, the more control you have over your behavior, therefore the better person you are. And this was just a great moment when, when the Jennifer Aniston character said, because the story was that she and her sister were both fat. Jennifer Aniston was able to lose weight and then go and win a pageant, but her sister wasn't. And um, then Jennifer went on to just like restrict herself to eating only salads for the rest of her life and um, working at a job to pay the bills and, you know, kind of that martyr thing where, um, she, and she said, her sister's courage always scared her. And I think that's the most emotionally honest statement that that character makes in the movie because um, it's fear that drives that compulsive need to be skinny and to like the fact that she had to zip her, you know, dress up that she's worn for the last 30 years. And that was like such a huge issue for her was like a great metaphor for how we're trying to measure ourselves by these standards and force shoehorn ourselves into these costumes for what we don't even know it's fear it's fear of this label of fat fear of not having the confidence to actually be what we are when we don't punish ourselves and that was a big message of the movie about self-love enabling love of others and I just loved how painful it was for Dumplin to not be able to accept another person's love because she didn't believe it about herself. That was huge for me to see on screen and to really feel that, wow, that's, that's what it is. It's not about anything, about objectively anything. Winning, looking a certain way, having a certain talent, doing it a certain way. It's all about owning for ourselves what we are, our own beauty. Um, our own uniqueness defined as beauty. And that was what was so great about the pageant as the context for this, as like definitions of beauty um, being so much more expansive than we're shown on a screen or a stage typically. So um, what else did I want to say? Oh, and so I did want to say that for about 10 years of my life, I did achieve a size four, which was a crowning achievement of my life. I remember my mom saying that, um, you know, she felt so huge when she was a size 10. This was like influenced by America. She came here when she was 22 and, and learned, and she was like 110 pounds at that time. And she learned that that was ideal. And then when she got to, oh my gosh, a size 10, she felt huge. And then she just like felt very, very um, bad about not being what she could and should be, which is a size four, which are the sales people. People who are size four can sell pharmaceuticals. Um, so I achieved size four through obsessive exercise, minimal eating, and extreme control of everyone around me to, um, to maintain a high stress environment. Um, so that's the formula, ladies. If you want to do it, <laughs> you can do it too. Um, so I remember showing up at family gatherings before that time and people saying like, oh, you've gained weight. And I'd be really insulted. You know, but they were complimenting me because they were Chinese. And then during my size four time, I would show up at those same family gatherings and people would say, oh my God, you're so skinny. Are you okay? Is everything, are you eating enough? Here, eat some more, eat. And so it was like, this never ending battle where I was like, are you not seeing that I am at the pinnacle of my existence at size four? Like, check it out. And no one, you know, nobody valued it. So 
those were some of the competing forces in my life. And I just love that now we're just kind of letting it through Dumplin. Uh, Dumplin has given us all permission to let all that shit go. Um, and I think I'll just stop there since these technical issues don't seem to be resolved. I'm working on it. It's at the beginning of this process. So um, thank you for listening and go see Dumplin'.